Hey everybody, it's Dr. J, and today, yes today, we are talking about identifying redox reactions. Let's talk about chemistry. So redox reactions, to remind everybody, is oxidation and reduction reactions. Redox is just for short, right? And with this, with a redox reaction, basically you got to have oxidation and reduction occurring at the same time. So just to remind everybody, oxidation is the loss of electrons, reduction is the gain of electrons. Check out that previous video talking about redox reaction specifically. Another way to think about oxidation or reduction is to think about our oxidation states, right? Because now we know oxidation states and we know how to basically identify them. Now, with oxidation, we could basically say, okay, if we're losing electrons. Well, that means that our oxidation state will increase, right? And if we are looking at reduction, right? That means that we're gaining electrons. And if we're gaining electrons, our oxidation state will decrease, right? So that's how we could think of it, right? If you're being oxidized, you're losing electrons. And if you're losing electrons, you're becoming more positive. So your oxidation state will increase. If you're being reduced, you're gaining electrons, right? So if you're gaining these negative things, then your oxidation state will decrease because of the electrons, all right? Now, when we're talking about redox reactions, we're always going to have two different things, right? Because we got to understand that reduction and oxidation is occurring at the same time. So if they're occurring at the same time, we're always going to have an oxidizing agent and a reducing agent. We're always going to have the two. So let's look at the very first one here. Oxidizing agent. Oxidizing agent is a substance that causes the oxidation of another. All right, so basically your oxidizing agent is causing the other reactant to be oxidized. All right, now, reducing agent basically means that a substance that's causing the reduction of another, right? So you have your oxidizing agent and reducing agent, right? Basically your agents are the people that are going to be doing oxidizing or reducing. Now let's talk about specifically, how do we know which one's an oxidizing agent versus when one is a reducing agent, right? So an oxidizing agent, right, is doing that oxidation of another. We also will be able to tell oxidizing agent if it's being reduced. So oxidizing agents are always going to be reduced. Reducing agents, that, which are basically doing a reduction of the other reactant, reducing agents are always going to be oxidized. Okay, so we got to understand, right, those two things. Oxidizing agent is being reduced. Reducing agent is being oxidized. It's kind of like a vice versa thing. Right? Say we got carbon and sulfur gives me this compound here, right? And we're trying to figure out what's being oxidized and what's being reduced. So if we go back to our oxidation states, right? And if we look at those rules, once again, check that redox reaction video for oxidation states. Um, we can determine we could determine what's being oxidized and what's being reduced. So let's look at carbon. Carbon right now is a free element, and we understand with the oxidation rules, all free elements are going to have an oxidation state of zero. Same thing with sulfur, right? Sulfur is by itself, so it's a free element. So right now, both my reactants have an oxidation state of zero. Now, when it comes to the compound, let's decide, right, and identify the oxidation states for both of these. So carbon... And this sulfur here, what, what are we going to see here, right? We, so we talked about how to identify the oxidation state, right? Sulfur is in that group. Uh, with oxygen, that means that basically your oxidation state is going to be minus 2. All right, so sulfur in this case is minus 2. We got two sulfurs. Bam. But my carbon needs to balance this out because it's a neutral molecule. So my carbon has to be 4, right? 4 minus, in this case, 4 in total. Give me a neutral molecule, 0, right? Once again, that's just a summary of what we talked about before. So once we identify our oxidation states, then we can decide, well, what's being reduced and what's being oxidized. So when we focus on our carbon, right, from when it's a carbon as a reactant to when it's a product, right, with our carbon, let's see what happens. So our oxidation state for carbon goes from zero to plus four. So in this case, all right, if we're going from zero to plus four, that means that our oxidation state, what happened to it? It increased. And if your oxidation state increases, that means that you're losing 
electrons. And if you're losing electrons, that means that you have been oxidized. So my carbon has been oxidized here. If I look at my sulfur though, right, we're going from zero to negative two. So if I go from zero to negative two, let's think about oxidation states, right? I went from a zero to a negative. So in this case, our oxidation state decrease. And if our oxidation state decrease, what does that mean, everybody? We're gaining electrons. And if we gain electrons, we are being reduced. So my sulfur is being reduced here. All right. So from here, right, we can then determine what are going to be my agents, right? We could determine which one's the reducing agent, which one's the oxidizing agent. So as I mentioned, if I look at my carbon, we went from zero to plus four, and we understand that it's going to be oxidized. So our reducing and oxidizing agents are always going to be reactants. They're always going to be reactants. So in this case, my carbon, if it's being oxidized, then what does that mean? It's going to be my reducing agent, right? Because reducing agents are always oxidized. Now, to double check this, you want to make sure, well, if carbon is my reducing agent, well, let's see if, if sulfur is being reduced. And is sulfur being reduced here? Yes, right? Sulfur is being reduced. Now, as we mentioned before, is zero to negative two, sulfur is being reduced. And then let's just double check to make sure sulfur is my reducing agent. Reducing, excuse me, oxidizing agent. Oxidizing agents, right, are always going to be reduced. And I just said sulfur is being reduced right here. So if sulfur is being reduced, this is going to make my sulfur my oxidizing agent. And let's just triple check now. So now that we know that sulfur is my oxidizing agent, is carbon being oxidized by the sulfur? Yes, it is. All right. So we just triple checked to figure out our reducing agent being our carbon because our carbon is being oxidized. And our sulfur is our oxidizing agent because it's being reduced. It's crazy. It's crazy, y'all. It's crazy. All right, but just think of it like this, right? Basically, if you're the reducing agent, the opposite is happening to you. If you're oxidizing agent, the opposite is happening to you. That's how we have to think about it. But the key thing to identify these reducing and oxidizing agents, the very first thing we had to do is determine the oxidation states. Then from there, we had to decide what was being oxidized and what's being reduced. And then we could properly, right, figure out which one is my reducing agent and which one is my oxidizing agent. All right, so I got an example down here. I got magnesium reacting with water, and then we're going to form magnesium hydroxide and hydrogen. What is my reducing and oxidizing agent? Y'all know the drill. Feel free to pause me right now. If not, let's get to it. So let's talk about it. Magnesium right now is a zero. Well, Dr. J, how'd you know it was a zero? Like, like we mentioned up here, right? Free elements, zero. All right, so magnesium is going to be a zero. Now, if we're talking about Going on our product side, what happens over here? This is where, you know, everything's kind of coming full circle, right? You got to be able to determine these oxidation states. So Mg is an alkaline earth metal. Then off the top of our head, we should understand it's going to have a positive two oxidation state, right? So in this case, we're going from a zero to a plus two. Our oxidation state is increasing. So if our oxidation state is increasing for magnesium, then magnesium is being oxidized, right? And if magnesium is being oxidized, well, let's think back to our reducing agent, right? Reducing agents will always be oxidized. In this case, my magnesium is my reducing agent. Now, the other thing I will look at is my hydrogen. Let's see what's going on with that one, right? So in this case, we're focused on our hydrogen. Our hydrogen, in this case, is going to be reduced. Now, we could have determined that by just simple elimination after we figure out the magnesium is going to be our reducing agent. Then we could just know, well, this is going to be my oxidizing agent, right? Because you can only have two at the same time. But let's talk about, let's talk about why, right? So hydrogen, right now it's a plus one, right? Within this H2O. And then if we go on this side, 
What do we see here? H2. H2 is a free element, therefore it's going to be zero. Everybody, please do not let those free elements trip you up. If you thought this was one, unfortunately it's not, it's zero. So we go from a positive one to a zero. Well, that means that my oxidation state decreased, right? And if your oxidation state decreases, that means that you're gaining electrons. And if you're gaining electrons, then you are being reduced. Okay, you're being reduced right now. So we went from a plus one to a zero. And because I understand my hydrogen will be reduced in this case, right? And the reason, just quick note, we, we, we're doing hydrogen because it's hydrogen here and hydrogen here. Okay, now if our hydrogen is being reduced, then that means our oxidizing agent will always be reduced. Therefore, my water is my oxidizing agent. All right, and this is how we're going to be looking at identifying our oxidizing agents and reducing agents.